Earlier in our work, when we came across a problem like x squared equals 9, we would make sure that we could get the equation to equal 0, so we would subtract 9 from both sides, giving this x squared minus 9 equals 0. Then we would factor the left side into x minus 3 times x plus 3, and after this step, we set each factor equal to 0. This would give us x equals 3 and x equal negative 3. So this has two answers. Sometimes we write this as x equals plus or minus positive or negative 3. To shorten our work, when we have a problem where the left side is a square, we're going to just take a look at taking the square root of both sides. So we get the square root of the left side and the square root of the right side. Well, the square root of x squared, if you recall, that was the absolute value of x and the square root of 9 equals 3. Well, if the absolute value of x equals 3, that means x could be positive or negative 3. And we're right back to where we were in the factoring process. So why don't we just take the x squared equals 9 and jump down and say that means that x is equal to positive or negative 3. Okay, now that we're able to bring into a problem the square root of negative 1, x squared equals negative 16 <coughs> can be written as absolute value of x equals the square root of negative 16. And if you recall, when you break this down into two parts, you get square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1. Square root of negative 1, we decided to call i. Square root of 16 is 4. So we get the absolute value of x equals 4i, which means that as in previous cases, x will equal positive or negative 4i.